could you just tell us a little bit about your organization, just in general terms, what kind of services you offer the community? Yeah. Um, the Société Canadienne Française um, offers services, but they're more, um, like we do a lot of concerts, um, mm -hmm. we have French classes as well, so a lot of entertainment type services in French. So for the French community, but also for people who are just interested in French, um, there's a lot of uh, dual language families where their kids speak French but the parents don't, or there's one parent who speaks French and the other one doesn't. So all of our activities are open to that type of family as well. How long has it been in Prince Albert here? Um, officially, I believe it's been for about 12 years, um, but there was a, a group, kind of an unofficial group that had gathered that was doing the same type of thing even before that. So right. it's been around for a really long time. Cool. Uh, how large is the French-speaking population in PA? Do you have sort of a general idea? According to Stats Can, there's about 2,200 francophones in Prince Albert and surrounding area. So what's considered to be the, you know, the outer limits of right. Prince Albert. There's about 2,200 people who identify themselves to Statistics Canada as being primarily francophone. A large number of francophone people who helped establish Prince Albert. Mm -hmm. So just as a local cultural component, there's a large number of Métis people who have a French heritage. Um, there was a lot of francophone people that came out. They didn't just stop in Batoche, right. you know, they came all the way to Prince Albert. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to recognize that as being an important part of the history of, of this, this mm -hmm. place, of this city, of this beautiful city with all the trees and all the everything. Uh, we had a great concert and um, games night that uh, by Cecile Duquesne Gate. She's a singer out of Montreal. Um, we had some intimate, well, small concerts that are held in houses. So we had four of those this year. That's that was cool. really, really neat. Yeah. Found some people that have larger living rooms. Right. And, but that was very cool. You could really meet the artist and um, really interact with them. So that's a, a neat kind of venue. Um, we have our French classes are very well attended, and they run from October through to May. Mm -hmm. um, and then our our French day camp has been around for ten years, and it's very well attended this year. They are ongoing. Um, we have at least eight during the year, so we have at least four of them that are held in houses, and four of them that are are more a, a traditional concert type right. venue. Right. Right. And we've we've done a few plays as well. There was one that was held at uh, Wesley United Church, um, another one that was held at the library. Um, this year we have Carmen Campagne that's going to be coming. We have a, a family golf tournament that's coming up on the 13th. It's very fun. It's um, free to members. There's a small charge for people who are not members, but it's always a time where we kind of bring out our calendar, you know, what's going to be coming, coming up. Um, so it's just a fun way to get together and sort of kick right. off the beginning of our year. Yeah. Um, there is a Circa Nova is going to be coming to Prince Albert on the 20th. Okay. And as far as I know, they're going to be at the mall, the Gateway Mall. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit more about the camps, Camp Franco Fun? Um, Camp Franco Fun runs for seven weeks during the summer. Um, we have longer hours than most day camps to accommodate parents that also need to have a daycare option. So rather than dropping your kids off at daycare and then them coming to camp and going back to daycare, we do sort of both. Um, they've had two to three outings every single week. So they've gone to Fort Carlton, they've gone to Petland. Petland came here and did an animal demonstration in the gym. Um, they are going to be going to the library to see a French movie this week. They've also played bowling. Um, done a whole variety of things. We'll be going to Batoche later on in the summer. Excellent. Mm -hmm. The French culture very much is surrounded by um, good food, good drink, <laughs> yeah. and good music. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be three pillars of activities that, yeah. you know, come back and come back by demand. Yeah. Um, so those are definitely three huge things. Um, people who are not Francophone that come to our events are usually surprised by mm -hmm by the, the good food and the good drink that kind of goes around. We have wine tastings that we've done throughout the year too. Right. And those are very popular. Very neat. Well, for one thing, Canada is a bilingual country. And so I think being bilingual and maintaining that French culture is very important for, for Canada, like for the culture, the Canadian culture, to make sure that we maintain that. Um, 
just from like what I what I say to a lot of kids is if you grow up bilingual you have way more job opportunities so I think that is very important to not just have French be a school subject but to make it be fun right. and have it be outside and for a lot of the kids who are growing up to be able to see and recognize that first of all that it's a fun thing yeah um, but also it's not just something in school you know right. there are real people who really do speak French yeah. and who enjoy it. Yeah, who enjoy it and will appreciate it if yeah. you speak it as well. Right. Yeah. And so I think for the coming generation, that's a very important thing to maintain. And we do have French classes for adults throughout the year. Okay. So if there are parents who want to improve their yeah. French so that they can help their kids with homework, mm -hmm. we facilitate that. Excellent. I should have shown my parents in that direction earlier <laughs> on. Uh, um, we do also have a community, a French community greenhouse this year. First okay. time ever. It's never been done before. It's an intergenerational greenhouse that is more or less managed by French-speaking seniors, uh, but is worked in by French-speaking families with children. Mm -hmm. oh, so excellent. bringing all of the French-speaking generations together. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a lot of education around the needs of seniors that's going to be happening and is happening kind of in that too. Yeah. So that's very important too. Um, and Nicole Valois has allowed us to build it in the back, like the back of oh, their excellent. property. Yeah. yeah, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Love of French, love of gardening. <laughs> that's right. Perfect union. Yeah, uh, and that way the teachers can use it. Um, but it's open to any French-speaking people. Mm -hmm. to be awesome. Well, we did not have a mascot, and we decided that that, that tourism has a mascot. Yeah, and cat. you know, well, we should also have a mascot. So we voted. There was a vote for a few months. Um, as to what type of mascot, um, and so we have a frog. Our contest running through the summer is to name the frog. Okay. That mascot n'a pas de nom. So <laughs> we have to name our frog, and we'll be uh, choosing a winner at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. And the the person who has decided on the winning name will also win a one year membership that's free entry to all of our activities for one year. Along with a little gift basket that has uh, maple wow. syrup in. And you have a website where you can get all your contact information? Yes, scfpa.info. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Down my feet. Well, excellent. Thanks for your time. We really Thank appreciate you very it. Merci for coming. Pas de problème. Merci beaucoup d'être venu. Yeah, à la prochaine fois. Merci beaucoup. Absolument.